You may have seen our 2021 video on how a cotton gin works. In 2022, we visited a different gin and learned how these complex operations are controlled. This is United Ag Cotton Gin in Danabang, Texas. We are here to learn about industrial control systems and there is no better place to do that than in a cotton gin. To understand why, let's look at some of the challenges in not only keeping this facility running, but operating fast and efficiently. There are right at 100 machines in the processing stream. Each one has one or more motors and motor controls. There are also several hundred sensors throughout the plant measuring temperatures, weights, power, amps, flow, pressure, RPMs, moisture content, fire detection, limit switches, and more. To give you an idea of how much is going on here, there are over 10 miles of wiring connecting all the motors and sensors. And this gin uses enough electricity to power 1,500 homes. Clearly, there is a lot going on. Now, a handful of the machines do have their own control systems. Most of the machines do not. But either way, all of the machines need to be coordinated to work together. That is where a master control system comes in. And at United Ag Danavang, those controls were designed and built by Mark Gentry of Gentry Controls. Before we looked at the controls... Mr. Mark showed Alex around the whole gin so we could see all the machines and what was happening with the cotton. Here is a quick overview to better help us understand the controls we were about to see. I saw where trucks unload the cotton modules. I watched it get unwrapped. I saw where the cottage is fed in. How it's dried and cleaned. How the gin stands work. This is where the lint fiber is removed from the seed. Then the lint gets cleaned some more. How air systems move the cotton around. Where it gets fed into the press. And how it's bailed. During gin season, this plant gins 1,650 of these bales a day. Each one weighs 500 pounds. If you want to see more details of how these machines work, check out our 10-minute video on how a cotton gin works linked below. There is something else about cotton gins that it's important to understand when looking at how they are controlled and operated. Most industrial processes have uniform inputs into their system. That means that the materials being fed in are fairly to very consistent from one batch to the next and metered into the process at a set rate. Cotton coming in from the field varies wildly. Variables include module size, moisture content, trash content, seed ratio, seed size, fiber properties, seed condition, and potential contamination. In addition, the ambient conditions are constantly changing and impacting the process. Skilled ginners adjust for all of these variables and more to gin the cotton as safely and as quickly as possible while still protecting its quality. 
A well-designed control system helps them accomplish this challenging task. So let's get a look at the master control system. These three touchscreens are the operator interfaces. Here, the jenner can see what is going on, turn things off and on, make adjustments, and customize settings to make the control system automatically respond to certain things. One example of customization is the auto start feature. With this many motors and machines, you can't just flick a switch and turn everything on at once. The order you start things up is very important, and each machine needs extra power at startup to get going. Starting up machines too quickly would cause huge power spikes. This control system allows the machines to be started up automatically and in any order the operator programs through easy-to-use setup screens. Power usage is monitored on all of the mains, so the control system waits until each machine's startup spike is passed before starting up the next machine. The net result is the operator does not have to babysit the startup, and the startup time to get everything running is very fast without creating excessive power spikes. Here's a short sample of it in action. Another example is interlocking, which is a way of saying not allowing one machine to run unless another machine or machines is already running. Okay, so go to motor interlocks. So we can pick any motor in the gym and then interlock it to any other motor in the gym. So let's just pick the module feeder belt. So right now it's not interlocked to anything. But module feeder belt, right, this motor will stop if any selected motor is not running and is not bypassed. So if you've got a motor and you need to bypass it, you don't have to redo all your interlocks. It skips it. And then hit more interlocks. So you can also have it stop based on one of the gym stand largest alarms or what flew. It's even nicer than what Clay was describing. All right, here's the describing it, but I just went quite the model. Yeah. So hit don't save. I don't want to change any other settings. And then hit back. And then go to motor bypasses. So you can bypass any motor. You see right now they've got these motors bypassed. So when they bypass a motor, if you look down here, you see how there's no buttons on Link Cleaner 5A? So you can't start it. And the reason you can't start it is because it's bypassed. But if you look at like Link Cleaner 6A, you see how it's got a button that says off? You can push that and start it. The reason the button is there is because it's not bypassed right now. Oh. Pretty slick, huh? Yeah. All right, hit that back button for me. And then... I haven't finished all of this, but go to motor run history. So you've got three, well, lifetime is not resettable, but season, motor, and drive are all resettable. So you can say, hey, we replaced the motor on the warehouse back. Hit reset, and it'll reset the hours and the number of times it's been started. And the ultimate goal is Clay wants to do predictive motor analysis. So we can say, hey, this motor's run so many hours, or it's been started so many times. Tracking run hours and starts is helpful for managing routine maintenance and for predictive maintenance. That is when you replace things like belts, bearings, and motors near the end of their life at a time of your choosing, rather than waiting for them to break and forcing repairs while you would rather be ginning. This control system also measures critical machine shaft speeds. If a shaft begins slowing down, it could be the sign of a pending choke or a slipping or broken belt drive. Catching it quick can mean dealing with a small problem and a fast fix. 
If it goes unnoticed, it could become a big choke with potentially more mechanical damage, more downtime, and certainly a more costly problem. That's actual RPMs of the shafts. In here, you go to shaft one. You can tell it basically how many targets there are per revolution, right? And then you can get it a filter. You give it a delay to start up. So, you know, it has to know the motor's supposed to be running. Yeah. But it also takes time for a motor to start running. But then you tell it a nominal RPM, and then where your low alarm is. I programmed the high alarm, not that any of us have come up with where it ever worked. But uh, BMP going crazy or something? Yeah. And then there's actually a warning, which is halfway between alarm and This system also monitors other things, like electrical loads on key motors and levels of cotton in bins. It also ties into systems that measure moisture and tracks bale and load numbers. Production numbers like bales per hour, bales per shift, and bales per season are also counted. Power monitoring on each of the main electrical panels is also a helpful tool for detecting potential problems. There is a lot of engineering, programming, and organization that goes into a master control system. But if done well, the complexity remains behind the scenes, and what the operator sees is a powerful but easy-to-use tool to help them do their challenging job. The result is an easy-to-use interface that graphically displays important information, controls that are easy to use, and many customization options that allow the system settings to be changed without the need to reprogram the PLC. When you think about ag operations, you might not think about sophisticated controls, but you should. A master control system offers easier operator controls, which makes it easier to train new operators and is especially valuable in seasonal operations like a cotton gin identifying problems faster, and making them easier to solve, minimizing both downtime and repair cost, improving plant safety, increasing efficiency and production, and providing management tools that aid in day-to-day -day decisions as well as building long-term strategies. The Gentry Controls Master Control System at Danavang helps them gin 1,650 bales a day and 150,000 bales a season. Getting that much cotton gin that fast is a lot of work, but the task is made easier with a solid master control system. Thank you, Mr. Mark Gentry, for teaching me more about cotton gins and their control systems. And special thanks to Mr. Clay Whitley, gin manager for allowing us to use your cotton gin as a classroom for the day. I learned a lot about technology and agriculture and how they go hand in hand. See you on my next adventure!